Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Etkelar. For my 13th restoration project, uh, I have selected a recent eBay purchase, a portable radio TV combo from the mid 70s. The radio was sold as working as is and the pictures looked like a good project for a few days. The disassembly is of course first again. And, like usual, I try to take out every last screw so I can address any rust, dust or busted part. In this case I'm going to replace the drive belt and all the electrolytic capacitors. Why is everybody replacing these capacitors? Well, you can see my informational tidbit video about that. The PCBs are sandwiched in. The tape drive has its own PCB that hosts both the tape electronics and the power amplifier. There are two belts on the tape, one for the motor and one for the tape counter. The other PCBs are recognizable. The TV board is the big one on top. It has the high voltage transformer as a dead giveaway. The one underneath is the radio, including the typical wire driven pulleys. Removing every last bit from the case. The TV tuning rig with yet another wire pulley. After getting all the parts out, I went through the capacitors and jotted down a list. Since I didn't look for a schematic at the time, I kept them in the board for now, marking the ones I already had on my list. Washing all the housing parts was next. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I don't think it was a smoker's device, but rather it may have been used in a garage for some time. There is quite a thick layer of soot on the outside. Also, the lettering is scratched up and a bezel is missing. Hmm. The antenna was looking a bit oxidized, but chrome can be buffed up with some aluminum foil. It's just a boring, labor-intensive, tedious, oh thanks mom! So now that the antenna is nice and shiny on the outside, let's unscrew it to clean the hinge as well. Oh snap! That screw was wedged in way too tight, and now I have to drill it out, and recut the threads for a slightly larger one. I found that my art supply store has a silk screen printing set for t-shirts. Could it work here as well? Some research got me to a company in Germany who offers silk screen paint specifically for plastics. Making a scan of the current text, finding another eBay listing with a picture of the missing bezel and I'm in business. Sweet! It took some time to get all the details right, but it's close enough for a first trial. Cutting the bezel from a piece of transparent plastic was easy enough. The shape was rather odd, with a knob sticking through. That circular mask cutter came in handy.
I was still unsure if I should try the printing step, but cleaning the panel with acetone took the decision out of my paws. The original paint just vanished. After polishing up the panels, I gave them a base coat of paint with the airbrush. Preparing the mesh has to be done in darkness, so here's the shot of exposing the emulsion. Well, that worked out rather well. Now I have a screen mesh with my front panel design on it. Up next, printing. Which went okay-ish? Well, there are two problem areas. The tape counter label was a total mess and I didn't clean the screen in time, so that part is now clogged up. And the main panel has some slight blurriness on one side, because the mesh shifted slightly. <sighs> oh well. Sending all off again and repeating the process would have taken way much longer than I'm willing to invest in this project, so way nicer than before shall be good enough here. Taking apart the tape deck mechanics next. Lots of grime in there. The tape deck was also the part where I started reassembly. Lots of spring and screws. Now the capacitors arrived. 
I started off with the power supply. and continued with the amplifier and tape unit. Since the outside was grimy, I also opted to open up the sliding switches and potentiometers to clean the contacts. I opted against the one micro switch, because it is a fully enclosed one and should be fine. Connecting the tape deck unit to the power supply and the speaker for the first test. Oh well, I can't have the audio in here for copyright reasons, but it was music. REM or KISS? I couldn't quite tell. The motor has a little hole in the back. I found out that it was to access a speed adjustment potentiometer. And thanks to the 3000Hz test tone tape I got, I finally could listen to my REM tape again. An absolute nightmare was the wire pulley system for the TV tuner. It connects the knob with the potentiometer and a set of spools with the printed scale. I had to completely re-thread that. Replacing the rest of the capacitors was simple enough. Also, the wire pulley for the radio went on in one go. No problem. Sweet! Up next is a game of Tetris trying to fold everything into the case again without scratching the newly painted and printed exterior. Slightly nerve-wracking, but eventually I managed to get everything in. Turn it up. Well, the tape deck works, like before, but no radio, no TV. Hmm, just plain nothing. Let's check the voltage on the supply cable running from the mode selection switch to the TV and radio part. Mm, about 3 volts only. It was either 9 or 12 volts internally, but not 3. Well, remember that part? I opted against the one micro switch because it is a fully enclosed one and should be fine. Well, mirror mirror on the wall, which switch has the worst oxidation of them all? About 2 mega ohms when connected. <sighs> After desoldering it, I found an almost perfect match for a replacement, but the pins were ever so slightly off. Before adapting that switch, I tried opening up the existing one and cleaning the contacts. It worked! And after adding some glue to the case and resoldering it, 
Radio. Woohoo! The TV part also works. Well, it has static on the screen, so the CRT controller works, but there is no more analog TV station around in my area. So I had to bring out another one of my restoration projects to provide a signal. And there we go! Way too tiny to be useful, but still, it works! And to top it off, using the soldering iron to melt some PLA to a notch in the case. And this concludes tonight's episode of Tinkering with Atkelar. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time, where I'm aiming for something a little bit more artistic. And continued over to the tape amp. Tape amp? Tape amplifier. Nice! A tape amplifier. Cutting the bezel from a missing piece of plastic. Uh, nope. There are two belts on the tape. One for the motor and one for the capacitor. Um, nope, that would be the tape counter.